privilege tonight of introducing Dr. Delbert Blair. Let me tell you a little bit about Dr. Blair's background. His educational background consists of a Bachelor of Education degree, a science uh, degree in engineering, and a doctorate in a uh, degree in divinity. His areas of experience consist of black history, ancient history, comparative religion, natural health, herbicide, safety engineering, biology, metaphysics, hypnosis, and also extensive research on, the, on uh, UFOs. He's had a number of television appearances in Chicago and New York. Many radio appearances also in Chicago and New York, and also hosts his own TV show on a Saturday morning show called Options. He's had extensive lecture appearances at the University of Notre Dame, University of Chicago, Loyola University, DePaul, Michigan State, Purdue, Wayne State University, Indiana, Tennessee State, Tuskegee, Bradley, and many other colleges and universities throughout the United States. Dr. Blair conducts private and group consultations on an appointment basis only. His lectures, seminars, and workshops include a variety of subjects. One interactive and popular workshop is the metaphysics of male and female relationships. This is Dr. Blair's first appearance in Portland, and we want to thank him for having the opportunity to come and bless us tonight with his knowledge. Without any further ado, let's give a warm Portland welcome to Dr. Delbert Blair. I have studied uh, the science of metaphysics, which is my heart, for 32 years. Uh, the way that I've gotten into it, some of you have heard on tape, I don't want to kind of go into that too much, but I had a choice between going very corporate, taking on a church, and I call it taking on a church because it was a large church and it entailed a lot of responsibilities, and I'm not a hypocrite, I do not play with the God or the Creator, and or going into the very political world of Chicago, I had opportunity to do that and then go from there. Something changed in my life that really a lot of people don't get the opportunity to have, and I thank the Creator for that. If you hear me use that word Creator, that's my name for the Universal Prime Creator, the First Cause. Everything else becomes religious and secular, and I really not enter that in too much anymore. But there have been so many miracles in my life, I have to show gratitude to the Most High, to the Creator, for having been um, aware of my need and listening to a little soul like me by having miracles happening in my life. One of the things that happened in 59 and 60, and I preface all of what I'm going to go into with this because it will let you understand me a little bit better. I'm a very frank person, a very honest person, and I do not back down. Sometimes I should. I'll try to walk away from a situation if necessary. But I have principles. I don't like to compromise them. Anytime I have compromised them in my life, I've gotten in trouble, and I don't intend to get in trouble for doing the right thing any longer. If I do the wrong thing, that's one thing, but not for doing the right thing. So I take stand stance. Some people like that. Some people don't. I really don't care. I try to tell the truth. Now, with that in mind, I had an incident, um, 59 and 60, by which I had a big decision as to whether to go very corporate or to get into the field of ufology, UFOs. If there was such a thing, I'd read a number of books. Uh, they don't have the bombardment that they now have on TV and the media, whereas it was more or less a kind of a clandestine thing. I was 17 years old at that time, and just completing, I was always smart, if you say, and I was just getting out of uh, undergrad school and about to see where I was going to embark. But one thing stood in my mind. If there was anything to this concept about UFOs or what they were called flying saucers, then it meant that all of my little education and all the things that the church had told me, all the things that mother and father had told me were wrong because they were not believers in these things. And if they were, to me, it meant that someplace on earth or someplace somewhere, there were people with intelligence that dwarfed ours, and those are the people I'd want to learn from, not somebody who is just a little bit more intelligent than I, but a person that could do this kind of thing. And plus the fact it meant there must be some kind of a hidden history that abounded that I was not privy to and I always wanted to know whatever I could to make me a rounded person. I had the opportunity of going to a UFO symposium at that time in Chicago. Uh, it was all I could do to scrape together the money for it because I was not making a lot of money at that time. And I met a man by the name of George Adamski. 
George Adamski was a Polish man who was holding a seminar there. I uh, just about crashed into his press uh, uh, again when he was addressing the press and doing his press for him. He lied and said, well, I know the young man is okay or else they would have arrested me. And then we spent some five hours in dissertation. This man had just gotten off of a plane from Yugoslavia, interesting enough, and was over here to make, a, I think, about 16 principal cities. That was the first one in his entourage. To make a long story short, um, he answered a lot of my questions to the depth that no one else had been able to do so. And then he gave me a challenge. He said to come back the next day as part of this form he was giving. I did come back the next day. I told him I didn't have any more money. And of course, I had a girlfriend at that time and a lot of other friends, but none of them wanted to go on these forays. Uh, through him, I met two very interesting men. They were both black men at that time. One was wearing an extreme natural, which was not the case in 60, and the other has close cropped hair and looked like a corporate entity, if you would. And not only did they read my mind, predict the future by 15 minutes, so I didn't have to wait to see if they were truthfully able to do this or not, uh, able to make me lose time. I lost about 10 minutes only in the time I understand but then also gave me some answers that no other people had been able to do and then gave me a challenge also they said to watch the skies for the next week i asked them were such things as ufos and this kind of thing and they said well just watch the skies for the next uh, week if you would well i had always watched the skies i hadn't seen anything that was mysterious to me that next week in the city of chicago i was going to university of chicago at that time and what they call the quads uh, quads are simply the rear end of four student dorms and faculty dorms that face onto a plaza. Well, I saw these three moving objects and they came down to no more than, I guess, 800 feet above me. If you've ever seen anything like that, you would never forget it. And it was a close eye view of three flying saucers back in 1960. Uh, it was very interesting phenomena. I questioned myself about it. And I really didn't talk about it other than to three people that happened to see it with me for 10 years. I didn't because I didn't feel anybody would believe me. I really didn't feel that I could benefit from it, understanding what was happening to people that did talk about it. And all I needed was that verification to turn my life around. I really didn't care at that time whether anybody else believed it or not because I was unbelieving until all this, uh, these things happened to me. Not being a hypocrite, I had stated that if I could ever find out that these things were real and what more than to see them or think that you saw them and I do think that I saw them and one by the way made a motion that just was they were sitting three abreast say about 800 850 feet in the air guesstimation one just said boom it lit up got brighter by the way too as they hovered they waved like a feather on water or again or on a pond or a stream and then one got kind of bright and swooped it was just as though it was there one time and then gone uh, it just showed, I can't even calculate speed, <laughs> the thing was gone as far as I could see, like a flash. The second one began to make right angle turns up and low and spun as it was doing this. It took those oscillations, I guess about almost six minutes, and it went out slowly out to the other direction. In the meantime, I kept trying to look at it as it was going away back at the main one because showing how fast one of them had gotten away from me, I didn't want the other to go before I was able to really give a you know, keen sight to it. To make a long story short on all of this, uh, the last one, the other one just made these right angle turns and so on. The other one just slowly went backwards, retreated from me, went up, I don't know how far, but not too far out, but mainly away from me, showing me this three distinct motion capabilities and uh, aerodynamic uh, you know, concepts that they were able to do. With that, of course, there have been so many miracles in my life uh, from that time on but never have I made contact verbally with anybody else that I felt was either alien or extraterrestrial. And to me, an alien is anything that's intelligent in the cosmos. It could be a grasshopper, it could be a spider, it could be a humanoid form, whatever, as long as it's intelligent. It would definitely be alien to us. To me, extraterrestrial, and as it was explained to me, is a intelligent being that has had a liaison either on this planet or a planet like this one and therefore can be sympathetic or empathetic to what we're going through. I have not had such a contact knowingly since. If they've been there, they haven't announced it. And all I have done is to see what has happened as a result of that, which increased psychic power with me, uh, just miracle, miraculous things have happened with me, and that's it. I give that as a preface because it will probably 
help you to better understand what I'm going to say and better understand me. Now, whether or not you are believers is not important. I'm not here to sell you a false. I give that because it will show you the very strong conviction and the very strong uh, imminent in my life, imminence that changed my life around. Now, we are faced at this time with some very interesting um, challenges, shall we say. We have a financial system that's in a process of being changed with the extreme right-wing Congress, and I'm not going to stay real political, but political politics are still the backbone of this nation, and they can't be skirted because what happens in Congress and what happens with all of those so-called servants and political imaginations that surround that happens to you from taxes on or down. We're finding cutbacks in education. We're finding cutbacks in Medicaid and Medicare. We're finding cutbacks in a lot of programs because there's not enough money for them. We're finding the Social Security system being challenged or possibly even some say bankrupt. We're finding our banking system, again, uh, backed not entirely by the FDICA as it used to be. Uh, we're finding the Federal Reserve making laws that nobody seems to be able to circumvent, and they are controlling our lives, our taxes, everything that we do. Based on all of that now, we're finding that the Cold War supposedly has ceased. The Cold War, of course, was supposedly where we were dumping meaning we, the United States of America, lots of money into to keep communism from usurping and taking advantage of us and usurping a democratic free form of society, a republic, if you would. We also are finding that those money that used to be spent for that are now free to be spent other ways, but yet the monies aren't there because there's a deficit and we can't balance the budget. Now, make just one statement to you as a lay person, secular as I would be in the ministry, but as a person who is not a politician. How in the world can we ever balance a budget if the Federal Reserve charges a dollar for every dollar that they put into circulation? Just that alone will show you that a balanced budget is stupid and silly and should not even be questioned because as long as a dollar is being charged by an entity outside of the United States government to print the money, then it means that all money printed will have taxes on it, and that is not what a republic is supposed to have happen. But in addition to all of that, we're finding again that there are certain black projects. Now, the black projects is a clandestine, nefarious overview of having Congress not appropriate money to the Defense Department or to armed forces or any other research arm, and yet they are spending literally billions, if not trillions of dollars to research into items that are not authorized by the United States Government Congress, but programs, uh, concepts like time travel, like not the stealth bomber, but Avro cars with the Avro plant that was uh, blew up uh, 19, I think it was uh, 60 or 59 or something like that, killing some 39 people, injuring 19, a joint project between the Canadian government and the United States government to build electromagnetic saucers all the way back there. They have projects now supposedly on the moon, projects on Mars, projects in time travel, and again, if you hear about the Philadelphia experiment, which I think has made movie history by being constantly circulated over 40 years' time and about the Montauk Project, then you can understand that there are a lot of things going on that are not being corporately funded, not being funded by the government, but still in all are receiving monies. You hear nefarious things about drugs and the people, and especially the inner city youth in about 164 major cities that are drug users and that the drug thing must be stopped. How can a drug thing be stopped when the government seemingly sanctions it or cannot find out what everybody on any city blocks knows where the local pusher is. To put people in jail who consume it and not people who bring it in is ridiculous. If I went on to point out all the things that the United States is guilty of, you'd all in there either crying or hating me for telling the truth. I'll say all you have to do is read certain books, A Higher Form of Killing. Waxman and Paxman came out of uh, England. Uh, read again about the poison needle, Eustace Mullins. Just read about the nefarious things that are being done by this country not by the citizens, because I find whether black, white, yellow, or brown, most citizens are not aware of this. And those that do seem to know about it talk about it in hushed terms about why is this happening. It's as though we're led by force or by someone who just is intent on being bad, negative, and no good. Now, if that's trite, then understand that triteness is the basis for goodness, because when we are children and are not so conformed and brainwashed, we understand right and wrong. We understand basic things we should not do. Then we're told either we can get away with it or we're told it's not bad, 
and therefore those minds now being sublimated now follow on this new type of teaching authority. Used to be moral authority rested in the church and non-secular authority rested in the institutions of higher learning. I often wonder what institutions of higher learning are now teaching because to me they're professing things now that only seem to get us in trouble. The true research scientists, it comes up with cures for cancers, comes up with cures for AIDS or proffers those. Their laboratories are bombed. Their papers are, they're, sometimes they're in prison, again, like in the case of Wilhelm Reitz. It just goes on and on. So I'm saying this. In case you wonder why some of the things that I'm going to get into tonight may be happening or may happen, look no further than your own mirror. Either you've allowed this to happen because you think it's funny or because of naivety, or you know others that you should correct and you're afraid to approach them because they might hurt you, or you have no soul yourself about what is right and wrong. Everybody that allows things to go on that should not go on, for either fear of safety of self, or for naivety, or for money profit, therefore has to pay when the chips come down. We've done a lot of wrong here. This country is far from being not guilty of a number of uh, terrible uh, what can I say? Just terrible things, we'll leave it like that. At the same time, there are far worse countries and far worse regimes that run those countries. But now, with what is called the New World Order, these things are being amalgamated. The good now becomes the bad, and the bad becomes the not so bad. Things can now be allowed as long as this one rule can come under the guidance now of the government forms that will let one world exist one means of distribution, manufacture, one means of production, and one world card because the end result of the new world order is to have one world card, no money systems, all monetary systems obfuscated. We are finding now that there are old plagues that are now coming around to become new scourges. They talk about Lambia Guardia or Guardia Lambia. They talk about Ebola. They're talking about, again, um, and I have a quote from this um, paper here, if I can find it. I think they call it the Betty Guy or Day Guy, a new disease coming out of Mexico, out of the Mato Grosso, where they're cutting down the trees. They have viruses of all sorts, and of course the AIDS pandemic not only threatens blacks, but it threatens not only homosexuals, but it threatens heterosexual people from all walks of life. We're finding again that the ozone, the hole that supposedly started over the one of the poles of the United States has, uh, of the world has now spread not only over the United States but over almost all major continents. This hole in the ozone allows ultraviolet UF rays to come through which are very detrimental to people who have very little skin pigmentation as well as to people who have a lot of skin pigmentation. What this is causing is melanomas and carcinomas, melanomas of the skin, carcinomas and leukemias of the blood. It is causing the body, which is not able to take in this new ultraviolet energy, this new energy rays, to burn, to fry. It causes, again, an imbalance within the, um, um, the glandular systems against the things that are secreted. It causes, again, as I say, the blood to become toxic. And once we reach a crisis of toxemia, disease and imbalance always sets in. We have as though the planet was actually turning on us. We have found that at Chernobyl, and I don't think there's anyone in here that has not heard of Chernobyl, again, that gaseous cloud, whatever it was made up of, drifted away. And there are reports of devastating things that this cloud, which is not completely dissipated, is still able to do. Of course, the Russian government denies that. Interpol denies that, and the United States, I'm sorry, the UN scientific community only gives lip service to it and not before the public press, which never repeats the idea that some atomic cloud could maybe be drifting over, causing all kind of devastation. They're finding, of course, now that uh, on the moon, where they supposedly spent 15 trips to, and I doubt that very seriously, that they have found pyramids on the moon. They don't talk about it. They found round dome structures on the moon. They found an OB-17 bomber on the moon. They find corpses of what looks like human people, uh, again, on the moon. They found, even with Virgil Grissom and uh, many of the other astronauts, Neil Armstrong and so, that reported that they had been paced and had seen UFOs or some type of unidentified flight objects, not only on the surface of the moon, but pacing them on their journeys to the moon when they actually went. 
If you remember again back in 1959-1960, when President Kennedy came into power, one of the things that got him incorporated into the United States uh, head uh, Congress, congressional person was the fact that he said, we must have a race to space that we must win, meaning the United States must win, that we must beat the Russians to the moon. Then, having put all kind of money, changed again Cape Canaveral to Cape Kennedy, put all kind of resources and monetary and brain power into this, the Russian launch two weeks before the supposed United States launch, the launch Sputnik. Then, nothing was ever heard about what happened to the Russian launch. Nothing was ever heard, and all you heard was the United States prowess and progress into the space race. What did happen was very interesting. In my reading of various books and so on, I'll give you a book list later on if you like it. It's yay long. But at any rate, was that a female by the name of Yuri Someone, being one of the cosmonauts, had stated that the Russian launch was blasted out of the sky by an electrical beam, possibly what they now call a beam weapon. I have no idea. But having been so blasted, Many of her comrades were killed and vaporized on the spot. Others were hanging in space where their capsule had been blasted. And as she reported, still on an open mic in her helmet, I guess uh, down to the, uh, the Russian base again, they are, they are collecting them. They're, this is something she was sobbing. And the last word supposedly, and now they're coming for me. I repeat, and now they're coming for me. Now this would make me feel being a lay person and being ignorant and not able to uh, have the deviousness of some of the newspaper writers and AP and so on like this, that this woman had been blasted out of her spaceship by something in the sky or from the earth and that whatever it was was able to now transverse space and pick up her hanging in the air in space comrades and herself. One thing is very interesting. After that, Russia stopped so much the race for space and in space and started getting into metaphysical research. They used to talk about secret projects behind the Iron Curtain, psychic projects behind the Iron Curtain. Yuri Geller pops up again and many other people who were supposedly able to use telekinesis by moving objects, mind control, uh, teleportation possibly they talked about. Many of the things that are now what we see on the TV screens and in the movies, what we call New Age projects, they started back there in the 60s and in the 70s. There was said that Brawatunchek and uh, another place, um, somebody may help me with another big Russian city, as late as the 70s and 80s had la UFO landings there, both in a theme park and also near the Russian embassy in Prague, per se. There supposedly have been a lot of so-called alien contact with the United States. Rumors had been that Eisenhower, rumors had been that Truman had all had UFO contactee contacts and also personnel that supposedly had driven these ships. Landing supposedly at Edwards Air Force Base, at Lackland Air Force Base. Uh, one, a couple of the other ones again um, out in California here. All kind of rumors about new, as they say, personnel carriers that hovered in the air and, uh, and the land hover, the air uh, vehicle that now was able to go over water and land was then introduced. Of course, nothing about the stealth at that time. It has been said that many people have been abducted on Earth. I don't think you can turn on your TVs now for one solid week without hearing about some UFO abduction, either supposedly in a fictionalized drama or the X-Files or Extraordinaire or whatever again. We're seemingly now blessed or plagued with everything about Deep Space Nine, about Star Wars 5030, about Star Wars uh, this and that. Everything now is about space, about aliens, about new inventions, about dimensional frequencies, about life on other worlds and in our solar system. Why? To me, it's because we're being prepared for something. I don't think that all those billions of dollars on network TV are sitting up there for nothing. Something they're preparing for, whether it be actually extraterrestrial or alien or government controlled, something is happening. If you've noticed again, over the last 10 years, at Christmas the best sales now are for reptoids and dinoids. Toys, mutant Indian uh, turtle movies come out, and at one time kids couldn't even stand reptiles in the main. Now they're loving reptiles. Now they're loving Dino, and they're loving all kind of other kids.
characters that, of course, not only are sometimes capable of dimensionalizing, but look much different than we do. Interesting enough, we have problems here with the races, with just four or five different colors, and yet now kids are accepting green scaly monsters and fish people and amphibians. <laughs> it's true. In the churches we go here tomorrow on Sundays and, and Saturdays again and we say how we love each other and we can't get along for five days during the week. But yet we can see and sympathize and empathize with E.T., the extraterrestrial, when he got hurt. And then we can go out and lynch somebody else, or we can go out and give poison to somebody else, or we can look the other way when somebody else is falsely accused of a crime. We have a very interesting civilization here. And with this new world order, this civilization is going to get tighter and more chummier. And some of the people that we're beginning to be chummy with, I don't particularly think, are the chums we should be running with. That's a personal opinion. As adults, you can make your own. But I will say this. Many of these research scientists know exactly where some of these Ebola are coming from. They know where the Lambia Guard is increasing from. They know through the World Health Organization how they gave in Zaire shots of smallpox vaccines, which already were outlawed through the same August on the, uh, organization on the international market. They understand the hepatitis B vaccine that was contaminated again with AIDS, so they gave it to Greenwich Village on two occasions, 78, 79, 72, 73, to homosexuals. They understand that right out here in San Francisco, the Coast Guard frigate that made eight passes back and forth, spraying bacteriologicals into the air so that they floated over San Francisco. San Francisco does have a large homosexual population that has no reason to then to try and ostracize or hurt homosexuals because there are other people living there too. So if they only hated homosexuals for some reason, then what about the heterosexual population? What about black, white, yellow, and brown, the Asian community that is there? Understand again, at one of the most heavily traversed areas of the Pennsylvania Turnpike, where you can go east, west, north, or south in our United States, during the summer, when people had air conditioning units on, tops down if they were convertibles, windows down, they sprayed bacteriologicals with unmarked black helicopters. They did it in 78, 79, they did it in 83, 84, and who knows how many other times that I have not been able to document through extensive research. We heard that the American Legion, Legionnaires, were meeting in a hotel in Philadelphia, and all of a sudden, through the duck work again, either induced by some accident or otherwise, Legionnaires' disease popped up. But before that time, you heard about, uh, what do they call this, um, they should have, I'm not referring to my notes now, I'm doing this all from my mental capability, which sometimes gets limited. They had, again, uh, simplex, herpes. Herpes 1, herpes 2, herpes 3, herpes simplex, and then you didn't hear anything more, but you heard about legionnaires. Then you didn't hear anything more after about eight and a half months about legionnaires, you heard about AIDS. And of course, there's no tie-in. There's nothing showing, again, why the yeast infection of candidiasis and candida now suddenly is gone crazy within the system. And by the way, I'm going to give you possible remedies and helpers for these things. I can't say cure because nowadays to say cure, you over infractionalize, you step into the world of the allopaths. So I can say possibly things that may help or remedies for these things. But suddenly now, the government cannot control, the uh, FDA cannot control. We're just full of all kind of plagues and viruses by which the immune system, the shots we used to get, don't seem to be as effective as they used to be. The treatments that we used to have don't seem to be making inroads against these new viruses. I simply say if they're laboratory designed, and I think they are from research, if they're asked for, paid for, and then delivered, then they're specifically made genetically to do exactly what they're doing to the people that they're doing it to. The only trouble is we always seem to mistake the Creator because these people are soulless and spiritless and don't understand what the Creator can do because they think that they're gods. So as a consequence, we're going to have to pay for that, and they are too. They're going to have to find out that they're not God, and that the very things that they create in their power struggle and their power-hungry mentalities can come back against them, which is doing now in the United States, and will continue until they change. And since I think they're so nefarious, they won't change, and we're in for it. Let me again just read you part of an article here. It says, O oh, new plagues, a Latin scourge. It's not just a Latino scourge. It is now a United States scourge. I'm going to just briefly jump through this. Brazil. It starts with a fever like a hundred less deadly plagues. Then comes a growing weakness. The skin turns yellow in the abdomen. Internal bleeding begins. 
Soon blood pours from the body, through the eyes, and in the endless black vomit. In nine out of ten cases, the liver dissolves and the victim dies. No, it's not Ebola. It's Labria black fever. Just one of a half dozen deadly and little understood viral diseases emerging from the rainforest of Latin America. They were told that those rainforests are one of our chief ways of oxygenating the Western Hemisphere. They don't care. They needed more hotels. Half the hotels they have now are seasonal and because of the typhoons and hurricanes, they're still losing tourists. But now you have to tear down some more. Let me go on with this one again to show if you can even look through this or what you would do given that kind of power. These power mad people don't seem to give a you-know-what. Let's go on with this again. People all the time are going back, I'm sorry, going into the jungle and coming back with strange fevers. No one knows about, said Bidet, I'm sorry, Bedzi Duari Thatcher, malaria specialist at Brazil's National Institute for Amazon Research in Manoas. If we started looking for them, we could isolate a new variety every week. A new variety every week. Viruses are the unknown frontier. I go on again. Perhaps never has a battle against disease looked so bleak as it does right now in Latin America and in the third world in general. New diseases are appearing at a frightening pace, researchers say. Even more disturbing, old scourges, once thought relegated to history, are making a comeback, particularly in Latin America. Tuberculosis is one of the things that they talk about. Um, malaria is another one that they talk about. Uh, plasmodia, what is this, plasmodia juice powder parasite, okay, and one of these Latin things, it simply means a parasite that can stay on mosquitoes, can stay on flies, tichy flies, can stay on bees, is also being brought back to people. Worms and other uh, things are, are carrying it, if you would. In Nicaragua and Honduras, a mystery illness characterized by chills, fever, and severe bleeding in the lungs has been tentatively identified as is parasosis an animal disease contracted through contact with animal waste. The outbreak has killed 16 people and sickened more than 2,000 in the two countries over the last two months alone. A similar outbreak in Brazil killed more than 40 people and injured more than 3,500. This goes on and on, and then finally I want to just go over, um, if I can, some of these other names that they gave for it. Cholera. Oh, please hear this one according to this article. Human migration also has contributed to the spread of disease, cholera, unknown in Latin America until 1991. Apparently arriving in Peru in bilge water dumped from an Asian ship. Since then, it has sickened a, a million people and killed 9,000 people. Controlling it in Latin America will take a decade and cost $200 billion, according to estimates by the Pan-African, I'm sorry, Pan-American Health Organization. I have this article, some of you may have received it, I tried to run off enough to have it passed out again. What I'm saying to you is, is that we've got a problem not only with viruses that I think were man-made, but viruses because of greed and a lack of respect for the planet are now being released from the tundra, from areas that to me were not necessary to enroach at this time because we were already having settled in all the land already available uh, to our country, if you would, and to the world. Drive some time from an urban city, such as Portland. Take a rural highway. You have miles and miles and miles of areas that could be developed. Some of them have trees, some of them don't have trees. In the areas of the earth, we seem to cluster together in small patches and let the rest of the land go by, even though it is livable and tillable. We seem to like to see suffering. I don't know whether it makes us feel better because we're not the ones suffering to see others suffering or just what. But we can always find a way to look down upon somebody else and say, well, gee, it's not happening to me, so I don't have to take any action on it. Then when it does happen to me or someone close, then wonder why everybody else doesn't get excited or get upset about it or help. If you help one, you're supposed to help them all. If you can't help any, then don't cry when it does happen to the few or to the one. There is a group here that seemingly is very interested in what is called the serious mystery. That is very interested in what is called the, uh, the people called the Dogons, or the Dogon people as I like to call them in, uh, in Africa, down in Maui and so. 
There is a people who seemingly are very interested in what happens with the Tuaregs, what happens with the Shaluks, also people in the Congo and in the deserts of Africa who have a very interesting pastime. Their way of life is predicated upon what seems to happen to the dogs. In fact, the phrase, we're going or I'm going to the dogs, comes from the doggone people. Okay? For some time, even before Lewin Wach and Ivan uh, Van Clark and other people on the British Astronomer Royal Society viewed with their telescopes what happened in our solar system and viewed what happened outside of our solar system and began to report about what happened in, in Proceus and what happens in Alpha Centauri and what happened again in the, the dog stars, if you would, Canis Major and Canis Minor. These people could tell those astronomers more about what happened in Canis Major and on Canis Minor than these astronomers could. It wasn't until around 1860 that they even discovered the Dagon system here. But before that time, these people had pottery, had parchments or tablets that they uh, carved on and rocked on and write on, had things that they circulated and tattoos upon their skins, talking about Canis Major and Canis Minor, the dog stars. That protection and help could come from Sirius. And also, as we begin to follow that back through time, back to the 20th dynasty, the 19th dynasty, and the 18th dynasty heyday in Egypt, we find that they had or shared the same common beliefs. Amongst the Egyptians, whether we think that they were prolific in uh, mental power or just in fecundity, these people reached a height that has not been duplicated if we believe that the pyramids were built during those 1600 years time before the 18th dynasty and when Egypt came into prominence. We find there that all that they knew about astronomy, which was very much, they still held two constellations very serious. They held Orion in the Pleiades and Sirius where? In Canis Major, Canis Minor. They stated that those two amongst all must be watched because they believed that the gods came from there. They believe that extraterrestrial or alien life forms, extremely intelligent, seem to have a lot to do with what happened on this planet and had done so for years. Before I go a little bit into the 18th dynasty, if that does not hold your interest, then Professor Zachariah Sitchin book and novels talking about Samaria and the tablets that were found there also talk about the Anunnaki and the same things that took place there as though there was a lot of interfacing and intercoursing of both goods as well as genetically with people on Earth and people from space. One thing that the Sumerians said, the Akkadians said, the Egyptians, especially in the 18th and 19th dynasty said was this. Those constellations bore watchfulness. Should never be far from your mind because of the impact of what they had done and could do pretty much any time that they chose and to understand their cycles of politics in the cosmos probably might behest man very much. It might be one of the best things that mankind could do. They stated that, and I paraphrase, that Orion in the Pleiades was referred to as Sahil, the foolish, the hunter, always looking for the souls of man and the sublimination of mind's man to turn him away from goodness. They stated that Sirius, Canis Major, was where the dogs, the protectors, were that had a deep interest in what happened on Earth and were always trying to help man if man could begin to turn back from the path he had chosen back to where he had seemingly started from. Now, I don't know if any of that is true. I'm not sure whether any of you even are interested in it, but I will say it interests me. And I will say when I see how much time in Sumner, in Mesopotamia 1, in Akkad, in Egypt, in Nubia, people spent watching the vibrations and emanations and electromagnetics from those planets, then I say something is very interesting about it. We find that during the 18th dynasty, 
whatever manifested there put an imprint on the genetic structure and the DNA of most of us here. Why do I say that? Roughly about 15 years ago, a entourage came out of Egypt and went through the United States and Canada. It was called King Tut's entourage. It dealt with Akhenaten, his father, and the golden funerary mask and all of the regals that were found with that society at that time. And yet, think about this, and yet, millions of people in principal cities throughout the United States came out to view this procession, this entourage. It didn't even have any real sarcophagi. It had only face masks, if you would. Whether they had the real goal with it, who knows. But people by the millions lined up in the snow, in the rain, in the heat, to go to the museums in the various cities in the United States to view this entourage, to see just the face mask of King Tutankhamun. Ask you, why? These were not all black people that came out. These were not all white people that came out. These were not all yellow people that came out, nor were the brown people that came out. People came out, and they didn't even know why. Something in their DNA or RNA structure, something locked in their so-called subconscious, vibrated, and they said, this is some possession that must be kin to me, and I want to see it. I just want to be there. I'll tell you why many of the Earth people wanted to be there because it was the last time on our earth in even recent history that the people who had the bloodline of the gods were able to reign upon earth. The people who had psychic power and the ability to work with the animal kingdom, to work with all the various species and kingdoms on earth and honored them. The people who were able to look forward to everlasting life because they knew that the soul could not die and that the soul was threatened again by a soulless wanderer who had come into our system and even called more and more upon their own venerated gods to help them by keeping them in touch with the universal prime creator for they believed in our tone or the one God along with the plurality of gods. In the Old Testament and in the codexes of the Hebrews and the Masoretic text describes were taken again many books which talked about the wars of the lords, which talked about the Ifrit, which talked about the humans and mankind in terminology that we have forgotten and told us that there was an abomination that happened on this planet and that there was an overview of people who wanted to see if this planet could ever outlive the laggard's entry into our solar system and upon this planet. And euphemized in the 18th dynasty under Queen Tai, Queen Mu, again, Akhenaten, Nefertiti, and of course, Tutankhamun, the boy king, was the last time when these long heads, and this is why many of the um, Egyptologists and studies of petroglyph and hieroglyphic writing and these so-called uh, researchers state again that they were stylized drawings from a time when Egypt fell. They were not stylized drawings. That's the way these people's heads were. They had long heads, much like the ancient Assyrians had long heads, and the Syrians had long heads. They showed that there was a genetic structure here incorporated in a DNA RNA factor that was not normally in the genes of Earth people. And it gave them great power for psychic and telepathic prowess. King Ot Ignatan sometimes called by the Greek Akhenamun, per se, and Armeniopolis, uh, or something like Aminotep, was a general who, who he went out on his uh, battles and so got tired of the fighting. And when in Toxila, talked with the Freotes there, Toxila is now Singapore, it was part of Asia, and was introduced to the Eightfold Path of Buddhism, and introduced to Krishna and Buddha, both of those terms mean the black or the black ones. Buddha means hail the black. Krishna is the purple black god of these people. They were told that there had been abominations here and that Egypt was going to be one of the chief centers for revitalizing this learning process once more. 
and for seeing if the magical herbs, if the magical incantations, if the knowledge of the underworld and Amenta could now be once more brought back to a people possibly ready for the last time before the wanderers return, what they call the 13th planet, which Christians now call Wormwood, the return of the Dracons. And if there could be a time when the people here could reach enough understanding to stop this scourge from happening again and to continue on the path of righteousness even with all the many humanoid forms that were now extant upon that earth. Well, seemingly, absolute power corrupts absolutely as they taught me in philosophy. Because the more power you give to some fools, the more power they want. They're never satisfied with power because they are corrupt in their souls or are soulless. As a consequence, these priests that were there couldn't take the turn of events that Akhenaten brought forth. Akhenaten changed his name to he who worships the Most High Atan, or Ankhenaten. Ankh being now a scepter, meaning heralding or relegating, and Atan being the Most High. He stated that he would change his name to Ankhenaten. And then, with all the many wives he had, and by the way, his many wives had given birth also to long-headed babies which means that that was in his genes for his fulfillment. He had been either placed or planted here, or for some reason he had been changed so he would proliferate this new kind of being. And then he found Nefertiti, supposed to be now one of the most beautiful women that ever lived upon the earth, outside of Alikas and Makeda. And again, in finding Nefertiti, he chose her over all of his other wives. Two things he had. A very fervent zest for life and an extremely long head which is looked upon as one of the marks of beauty which many of the African people have tried to emulate since that time. Through her he had supposedly sons and I won't take it further than that when I say supposedly because that is something for a black history lesson and it begins to speak in terms that I don't think I should share with you but I will say this which I do think I should share with you. The long-headed babies, either of that union or other unions, and the fact that Nefertiti had a long head and was all very psychic, all of these people were, including Queen Tai, his mother, was the last, as I say, part of the DNA, RNA factor within a people on Earth that were set to rule. The right and passage of kings to rule was based again on the ability to control kingdoms. But we didn't understand that that kingdom was not just the kingdom of earth, but the other species kingdom and interdenominational kingdoms, that's what met for the rite of passage for man to come into his higher self. You didn't elect leaders, they were born. You didn't elect rulers, they were born to rule and they showed it through phrenology, cranial uh, concepts and the DNA factor. If they couldn't be telepathic, if they couldn't control animals, if they couldn't understand the people, they were not fit to rule. And once you found a bloodline like that, they tried to keep that bloodline going. This is why, as we got into the Serbian and later on European right of kings, where they tried to even use incest to keep a bloodline intact, it was brought on by the Nubian Egyptian dynasties, which showed them that there was something there to protect and something there that met the right of rulership through spiritual qualities, not just political domination. Once Akhenaten had reached his height, he retreated from the warring world and from the so-called social world and did lots of meditations and began to call upon the gods, as it was said. So much so that Nefertiti began to fear for his life because understanding the power mad priest at that time realized that if he was not a strong ruler and could not maintain an army that they probably would usurp his power and probably just finally overthrow him. Well, she spoke better than she thought because in her zeal and fear, she conspired with the priest of Amun and he was poisoned. Roughly around 39 years old at his death. However, they had the son, the boy king, Tutankhamun, and he died between 18 and 19, also poisoned. And one of the curses of that dynasty is that we don't even understand the real names of those people in that dynasty. If Amenophis had changed his name 
to Ankh Akhenaten because he venerated the one high supreme being in the cosmos, the creator of everything, and realized that there might have been lesser servants, which we now would call gods with nothing but scientists on other worlds, and respected them, but did not respect him with the same, shall we say, humbleness that he did the Almighty. And he took the time to change his name to Ankh Akhenaten. Why would he leave his name of his only son, or the son that he most respected, to be called Tutankhamun after the priest of Amun? In the unity of early Egypt, Amun Ra, Ra, the Most High Sun God, and Amun from the Nubian dynasty, and there was a great battle that was fought between um, Amun Nath, uh, between um, I can't think of the guy's name, uh, Memphis or so on and so forth, and somebody else that represented Nubia. Why would he then have his son be called Tutak, what? Amun. He went against the priest of Amun. He changed his name from Amun. Why would his son be called Tutankhamun? His son would have been called what? Tutankhamun. Tutankhamun. Because it venerated the Most High and the One God, the same as his father had changed his name, as many of the brothers and sisters are now understanding to change their names for the vibrations of the same, and it showed again that they were making a step forward in this to mortal life. Why did I spend all that time with that? Because it is from the Egyptian technology, the Egyptian religion, and the Egyptian understanding that our whole system of government has now come forth. And what was said to be the first veneration of a higher, what we would call more metaphysical culture, is now sank to the point where it took a million men to have to come to the same venerated spot to remind them of the bloodline of the gods that still exist on earth and how it has been persecuted. On the back of the Federal Reserve note, no longer a dollar bill by the United States men in Congress, but by unity outside of the United States government, which prints this, the Federal Reserve, are still the symbolic metaphysics that all Masons understand and all secret societies of truth understand. The God-man that was on earth and would return in the 13th quadrant. Everything on here is number 13 multiplied. From the pluribus unum, from the nobis chloride, from again the United States seal, from the 13 stars, the tail feathers, at the 13 steps again leading up to the nun, Zegarath, and the eye of Horus that floats above it. All of these things simply show that it stated when the culture that was here with the eagle, which is a predator, begins to fully understand the culture that was then, which was in Egypt, or Aton, or Fez, that this money would be worthless. Because the consciousness would have changed and the monetary system therefore must fall and a new world order, Novus Order Seclorum, would come into being. This is nothing new. This has been relegated in 1776. It was relegated by the Constitutional Fathers, Benjamin Franklin, who was a Mason, and all the rest of them. And they have fought against the time when people would understand the serpents among us and fight against the serpent people and its kind to restore again the natural man to Earth and to our solar system. This fight has never ended. From the garden where the serpent was relegated to one who made Eve eat an apple, this understanding that this was three races separated from the underworld, the overworld, and the place in between, the surface of earth, relegated to fairy tales that children only believe, and now many Christians do. I am not denouncing Christianity. I am a minister of the Christian faith. I am saying it's time for foolishness to go and for adulthood to come. <laughs> Simply... This emblematic piece of magical parchment was a reminder of what has happened on our planet and what could happen on our planet if we fail to follow the upward path. Excuses for an adult are laborious. An adult is supposed to know right from wrong or the adult should remain a child. Wisdom does not seem to come with age. Well, we have found, again, as some adults here have forgotten what they knew innately as children, those born of women. 
We're finding here now that we can find billions of dollars to spend on how to destroy certain DNA molecules, certain DNA fibers, split again all of the fibers and strands of DNA, and hate people just because the people are supposedly too simplistic. And yet, in our wonderful technology of super sophistication, <laughs> we poison the atmosphere, we poison the land, we poison the water, we kill off animal species, we disregard religions, we persecute, and in a power of madness, instead of attacking those who are strong, they always attack the weaker. That really shows a lot of power, doesn't it? To attack those who can't attack you back. But understand, if there is a creator, and we are only borrowing the classroom of Earth for a certain time, hoping to graduate or fail, then we're playing very, very, very funny with the dean of students who may report us to the president of the college, who may report us to the board, who may see that we get expelled or shunted away from this planet. It's been done before. And if any of the abductions that are happening, those lizards are back claiming their own once more. Let me deal with that, something that a lot of people want to skirt. And I can only tell you how my research has found a truth. There is no truth to you decide what truth is. But you must find your own truth. But I will give you things that may lead to an inflection or to a way of helping you form that truth. We're hearing on radio, we're seeing on television, we're seeing in the movies about what is called abductions. And it's said to be done by what are called aliens. I went through a definition earlier about what I consider alien versus an extraterrestrial. These alien abductions are said to be interesting, for they happen on different levels. On some levels, supposedly the person is taken and implanted, either right here, the bridge at the nose, or the medulla stem, where the medulla, again, it's a 32nd vertebra. And there, supposedly, is implants. Things that if they remove, the person dies. They can't remove them. There have been many uh, reports of cadavers, uh, again, when the um, surgeons have to go in there for autopsy, where they've seen them, seen these things implanted in there. And at the time they were finding them, in the 50s and 60s, that technology and micro-miniaturization did not exist knowingly within the United States, August Allopathic Society. They're finding people who are implanted and seemingly are told or instructed on the subconscious level, right brain, to do certain things and then they forget what it is that they're supposed to do, but yet they feel under hypnosis that at a certain time this will resurface. And under deep regression, hypnotic drugs and very excellent facilitators, they can't crack through on some of these people and when they have, they've died. A few have been able to remember just parts of their kidnapping, or if they like to call it abduction, and what was done to them, and they shake in fear, and they hear about little greys, which are really called the Bafath people. The Bafath are from Betelgeuse. They've been around for a long time. They hear about the hook-nosed greys that came around in the 16th century from Upper Bulgaria, and are the Caucasoid Mountains and the Carpian Seas, and so the Carpaginian Mountains. They hear again about the dracons or the reptiles or serpent people that seem to be in the shadows behind them. Even in the book by Whitney Scriber, even in some of the movies that you see, they're always showing you this reptilian form in the back, and even then they don't define what this reptilian form is. Why are they still hiding from you even when truth is being released? Because maybe a snake is a snake and any reptile by any other name is still a snake. They still hiss and they still hate humanoids. I have no fear of them because the father that I serve saw through their backward creation and they will suffer much more than I will ever suffer. But the point is, again, they even have a time now to make a change. And even they are still using other people to carry out their vindictive vendetta. They're using the great people, the people from Gato Geese, who have been cloned almost six different times. They can't absorb, they have no souls, they're about to go out of existence. And you ought to know, can you go out of this universe backwards? Yes, you can go out of this cosmos backwards. If you fall far enough away, away from the creator's mentality, from the mind flow of the higher vibrations. These people 
seemingly made a deal with some of the world powers. Power matters they were. They already had all the money. They printed all the money they need, but that was not enough. They wanted technology that these little grays, these little viruses, coming to a condemned, intoxicated planet could bring. So they seemingly made a deal in Russia with one, great, one, one source of them, and then they came and they lied and told the United States, well, we wouldn't make a deal with anybody else. If we serve you, we serve man. Almost like that movie, We Serve Man, a good culinary dish. <laughs> so they said, well, we'll serve you, and all we'll ask is just one little thing. From time to time, we're going to take away some of your citizens. We're going to make them better because we're going to implant them. And plus, we've tagged them like you tag your animals now anyway. And we want to follow on this developing experiment, which has been going on now for literally a million years. And in turn, we will give you some of the best technology to help you go forward, to be able to hold it against your enemies and be able to make them tremble before you. And plus, just to let you get into what is called free space and teach you how to go from planet to planet. Well, the power mad people bought it. Then they found out that they were supposed to report ahead of time the names of the people they were abducting so they could make, you know, cover up for it again, per se, the missing time, if you would. But then they find they were abducting lots of people they weren't reporting, and some of the people weren't coming back. Then they found that when you make a deal with Shaitan, that sometimes Shaitan doesn't really have to hold homage to you. No clause in there that he has to respect, because he's not, again, of the same court system. Sometimes I get kind of sick in my humor, but I think nobody can be sicker than the people that I'm seeing people worship and idolize. So I think I can be a little bit neurotic if they're already psychotic. In looking at this setup and in understanding the little bit that I do of Earth history, I say that they could have used the previous past history to see that that deal has never worked yet especially since they believe in the devil and many of them do and in a supreme being called a god and, and Jesus and many of the other avatars and they go to churches and profess to. Most of these politicians will show up in church simply because they want you to vote for them. But obviously they don't believe in the tenets of their religion or they would not do what they did because they would know they can't get away with it. So obviously they're hypocrites. And like all hypocritical people, they have weaknesses. They then said, well, we've got a deal here and we're not able to control it too well, NASA, I got a problem. Interpol, I got a big problem. We need help. So they took their best scholarly minds from 13 countries and every state in the United States that had an advanced genius or intellect. And they put them together under what they call the Jason Scholars, first under MJ-32, then MJ-12. The best thing they could come up with a plot to blow up Titan and genetically alter and genetically erase certain species on Earth that they thought that they didn't like. That's the best thing they could come up with. They came up with a lot of other thoughts and consciousnesses, but they exacted those too. When it came down to what they could do with the alien scourge here that seemingly lives 30 miles down inside our Earth, not only at Dulce and at Area 51, at Lackland, at Edwards Air Force Base, at Lower Saskatchewan, and many other places. But they said that maybe we can do something with them, so they invented a screw bomb, a bomb that could be launched and shot down into the earth. If many of you saw the movie where they launched a missile that bored into the earth, later on it exploded a magna layer, and we had almost the end of the earth. I forget what that movie was. It's the same kind of principle. They wanted something that could bore itself into the earth, explode on the level where they knew that many of these aliens had taken refuges and where they were living, and supposedly implode there and destroy them. Well, they found out that the kind of technology that these people had, even with this is such a bomb, but it caused many of our earth tremors, and began to form, again, pockets of gas throughout what is called our underground tunnel system that began to affect everybody on earth and hasten the day of whatever was coming anyway, which I'm going to wind up with tonight. They found that when at Dulce, New Mexico, in a lab that goes 13 stories underground, this was at least eight years ago, I don't know how far it goes now, 
where aliens and United States technicians and world technicians were working together on very horrendous projects and some not so horrendous but far from the technology that we now manifest to uh, our various divisions of uh, industrial might if you would you know the North American and uh, Northern Telecom and AT&T and things like this these projects were far past all of that they got tired of it one time did these what was left of human feeling beings and they formed with their Delta Force supposedly a kill group that was going to take out these aliens in six minutes in 32 seconds they were all dead not the aliens for they found out that they used mental blocking telepathy and the men turned the guns on themselves they turned whatever weapon they had on themselves and not only that but they could get in to make the blood boil within the person till they almost exploded almost like you see in scanners you see the movies are telling us the truth the screenwriters are definitely relaying from books the things that should be shown but we're not believing what they say even though we believe the movie I don't think we fully yet as a race of people of varying degrees on this planet what time it is I think we think it's still the 17th or 18th century I think that we think that there is no police force that is universal and I think that we actually have believed the press clippings that we are the gods that we can destroy a planet or do anything we want to and nothing's going to happen to us because we are the gods well some people can get just that way out now they have found that there seems to have been a civilization on Mars that still exist inside that there seems to be civilizations that can exist coinciding with us not only on parallel universes but simply separated by the rates of vibration that interdimensionality interdimensionalness is only a matter of raising frequency and then you find yourself in an entirely different life form existence that we're delicately balanced by the Almighty Creator believe in him or her or not and that if you begin without permission to interfere with that delicate balance you pay the piper you pay the penalty many people who have power made a pact with these little viruses which are called the little grays not understanding that they served another master that master was very negative to what was created in the solar system in the form of the planet Saros, Shan, Terra, Earth. That to hold this planet back with the various experiments that went on here and the various life forms that had been genetically mutated here to see the species could interface and live in peace if they had souls was to set up a call for the gods to come back the gods that had first seen that earth was worth all the tears and all of the planning that had been done to set us in this system which was supposed to be part of Sirius Procyon the Pleiadians in Orion serving again a reptile master through what is called the unholy six sought to use mind control to stop the great experiment that was on in and around the planet Earth and they felt that since this could be a place of double promotion and triple promotion a place of advanced concepts where people could become gods almost overnight in other words 500 years is nothing in the eyes of the time of the Creator that if they could interfere with this great experiment if they could do something to hold it back that the negative force of the tree of life the Kabbalah that they served could set forth more demons in a backward way away from the Creator and so they set first of all with the power mad with those who were not content with being in balance with self to see if they could deviate them to have them follow them and seemingly they were successful but now the tide has turned at the end of 1959 
our sun change from a step-down transformer to a direct emitter. It took energy from the various big cosmic suns and related directly to Earth instead of stepping it down for the Earth people. It made the vibrations here and the electromagnetic fields of Earth here change. One of the things that the Dracon or Serpent people had done was to set up a electrical field around Earth which had at one time only a magnetic field. This electrical field causes us to pulse in and out to vary our frequencies and to fall lower in vibration from time to time than we should. All machinery that uses electricity uses, as Tesla pointed out, a variable current, highs and lows, alternating current. And the alternations of which, when it is low on the electrical spectrum, cause us to fall from the higher type of energies that we really want. A true magnetic field keeps you stable, keeps a static, not oscillating wave, and lets people begin to mature and progress. How they did it, I won't go into that, but it's not that hard what they did, if you understand electromagnetics. Now, our sun, since 1959, is putting forth energy from Arcturus and Procyon and Alcyon and all the star systems behind it and relaying the energy directly from Havana, the central universe, directly to us. And now it means the magnetic field of Earth is restabilizing. New energies are flowing into Earth at an unprecedented degree. Background radiation, which is called by the so-called geophysicists and astrophysicists, is streaming into Earth ultraviolet rays and X-rays that can mutate, and a cathode ray bombardment that can alter things are stepping up and cells are mutating. That's bad because it can also cause what we call the plagues to come upon us. But also good is making us remember if we have souls who we were, why we were, and where we were supposed to be going. It's revving up old latent DNA and RNA matter in that right brain. Laconically, we have been taught only left brain utilization. If you can't feel it, touch it, be it, it doesn't exist. Therefore, air doesn't exist. Therefore, spirit doesn't exist. And some of these godless people have bought that foolishness. Since some haven't, the planet is going to be turned over to those that still believe in a spiritual being and can match those frequencies by altering their brain waves and later on their physical apparatus. That sun is putting out energy that is causing what is called by the geneticist junk DNA, and the creator never made junk. To recombatant and reunite. It's causing people to become now more psychic. Intuitive females are now becoming psychic females. Intuitive males are now becoming the gods they were supposed to become. A god is only a person with more powers than the average person around them in a humanoid fleshly body. But the mind has been altered. The spirit and the soul are vibrating high. Animals feel this, sense this, and they can communicate with them. They can begin to read people. They can begin to understand negative vibrations from positive vibrations, and they can begin to alter their own genetic systems. Therefore, their immune system becomes secretive of things that can help to maintain against virulence and viruses and bacteria. Inventions are then made during this time to sustain people even against the plague of AIDS and candidiasis and so. The molecular structure of the air changes again from ozone, which shows that there's always something wrong and imbalanced there, to pure oxygen, which kills off any anaerobic bacteria, which all of these viruses fall under the heading of the anaerobic. It's just that simple. Raise your vibrations in your blood, take in the new vibrations and all those things that are not in the Creator's path, not on the Creator's vibrations, cease to exist, including human forms. Viruses always are the first to go. But before they go, in that little codicil between one vibration and another, they always manifest the most, and this is why the plagues are back. Some of these warp-minded genetic scientists think that they are created them. They're given the power to create only to fulfill prophecy. And they will fall victims of their own Frankenstein monster. In terminating and in turning over to Q's and A's from you, let me just say, 
In Chicago yesterday, people there saw a double moon. Some people saw four moons in the sky. Now, I don't know if it's made the press here or not, but it was all over the communities, whether or not the press even reported it. In the Six-Day War, Egyptian tankers climbed out of their tanks and surrendered to six Israeli tanks and some jeep-mounted 50 caliber machine guns, and nobody could understand why. Holograms are now being used to bring about and fulfill prophecy. I repeat, holograms are being used, will be used now to deceive people even fuller. At the same time, when the universe through the cosmos and the creator is actually changing. People will now feel and see prophecy being fulfilled, but it will only be government holograms. Whatever a religious denomination wants to see, if there's enough people, they will let them see it. And they will follow those false gods and dictates wherever those politicians lead. But in the midst of all of that is the great change that is actually happening on our planet. The great change of the new vibrations that are sweeping over every state in America and every country and nation on this planet. Because people must decide. It will not be a matter of, I didn't know better and therefore spare me. Yes, people will ask for mercy when they're judged. Because justice will make most of us go to pot. We need mercy, not justice. At the same time as people are turning and searching for the new creator, will be this false creator coming back in the form, again, of New World Order, order Technology. But, as the molecules of oxygen stabilize on this planet, all the powers that everybody ever wanted will return to them. As the molecules of oxygen raise the vibrations to the magnetic field of this earth, everybody who is sick will get well, and everybody who cannot adjust will get sick. The earthquakes, the tidal waves, the droughts, the plagues are here because people could not and would not turn from the falseness to the truth. Those of you that can feel it and understand what I'm saying is at least 98% true, then can vibrate with that. You think you understand as I do. Those of you who feel that what you've heard has been foolish, that can see no practicality in it, that is also your judgment. You serve and follow whoever you would. But I say it's a time of choice. It's a time of mass. It's a time of, again, the left brain giving out and the right brain settling in. And I want to end it before I turn it over for questions and answers with a poem. I am somewhat of a poet. Some of it's good. Some of it's not so good. You have to determine whether this is one or the other. Oh, magnificent beast. And it's called simply Hugh Man. O oh, magnificent beast of this strange, enchanted land, you roam your asphalt jungle clothed in skin that we call man. Insensitive, incredulous, and congress to all of God's created works that you find both large and small. Just how long can you wander in your self-created web of total make-believe about who and what was said, changing who, changing how, and what was in antiquity? as the whole world comes to know how you've lied of history. By distortion, deletion, deception, and disguise, you've altered written records from the cosmos to our skies. You've reconstructed universes and summoned even hell, and there seems to be no end to the lies your mouth can tell. What you view on graphs and prisms, what you see in lens and scope, seems too staggering to your mind and ego brain, and so to cope. You'll distort the very heavens. You'll change the smallest beasts, and there seems to be no end to let your fame to cease. And yet you know within, from the most unto the least, that your time is running out, and your lies, they soon must cease. As we view each bright new morning, even through polluted skies, we know there is a creator, for creation never lies. And so we come together, we knew ages tried and true, seeking blessings from our Creator. 
and divine release from you. I thank you. How are you? Are you familiar with the book Fingerprints of the Gods by Graham Hancock? I'm sorry, Fingerprints of the Gods by whom? Graham Hancock? No, I'm not. Are you familiar with the idea of man pre-existing before the Ice Age yes. at a high development? Yes. Um, do the dates of uh, May 5th, the year 2000, you were talking about the electrical alignment of the Earth and how the planets are going to line up at that precise time. Do you think there will be some kind of cataclysm at that point? Well, I've heard the date given from the 2nd to the 4th, and now, of course, the 5th. Some are even given the 12th, 2012. I think that sometime in our chronology, there will be alignment of the planets. Uh, our planet will be the only one in opposition to all of the 12 other planets in our solar system, including the Triskaidekaphobia, the returning 13th one. And I think at that time that the pull on Earth will be such that uh, Earth will either be destroyed, and I don't think this planet's going to be destroyed. I think it's just going to cause a lot of souls to just be shunted away. It's going to cause great cataclysms, and it's going to cause a frequency change, as far as I believe. Are you familiar with the uh, Mayan or terminology about uh, 2012, the ending of the fifth sun? Yes. And what are your comments on that? Well... In looking at a lot of the uh, Mayan, and to me, any time a topographer or uh, geographer says Mayan or historian, they're talking really about Olmec. They just won't use the word Olmec. That the Olmecians uh, knew of the order of the serpents that was coming again here, and that the Mayan calendar, as they call it, the Omecan calendar, dealt with the serious sun of Procyon in the orbits of Venus, as they stated. But Venus was only the, one of the protectorates of the serious system of Procyon, uh, Canis B, Canis, Canis uh, Major, and Canis B. And that, to me, is a fulfillment of prophecy. It's a time for those souls who still left uh, here that had the bloodline of the gods to come into their own, and a time for Earth to take on a new vibration, complete its, its vibration. Thank you. You're welcome. Hello, Dr. Blair. My name is James. How are you? Uh, October 16th of this year, uh, we had uh, the opportunity to go to the Million Man March. And uh, the spirit that I felt at that march, to me, uh, it, it signified a, a change that is about to happen. I uh, don't know if it was just uh, for melanin people or not, but I, I would like to know what uh, your views were about the march. What my feelings were, I didn't understand the last part of your phrase. Uh, right, what you my were. feelings were about the march? Right. Well, appreciate your going there. My feeling is that our group did what we could to protect them metaphysically because they had given ten and a half months for a very nefarious people in general and specifically a uh, certain Delta Command to really act against them. That area there is a, a very interesting area, to say the least. All of Washington is honeycombed with tunnels and caves and everything else. And particularly at that mall and the reflecting ponds that lead from the Washington and Memorial and Lincoln, uh, the, the um, what they call it there, the obelisk there, to the chambers of the Congress, is just honeycombed. Um, they have what they call psionic and psychotronic, psychotronic machinery, psychotronic devices. Uh, they have used ELF prolifically throughout the world and could have turned it on those men there. It's a very dangerous time. But it was a time when those men raised their vibrations and consciousness. If you remember there, the Crips in the blood even changed colors. Now, those who understand gang terminology, this was two of the most nefarious gangs in the black sections of Washington, D.C. They came together and grew hands. These men stood for 18 all the way to two hours and didn't move. The rains that came before that day ceased that morning and started after they left. These were a terminal time for the United States to remember where it had fallen from, reminding of its melanated carriers of the word and to stop the falseness. Now, whatever they intended to do covertly, 
and maybe some of the really hostile, overt acts that are capable of being done by those who have little consciousness. It didn't happen. Four, even the wind gods, <laughs> the elements, understood when vibrations were raised and understood that this was a turning point. Things were so still there, just amazing, per se, if you would. It was the last warning for the United States government, if it still has representatives of the people and for the people, to take a stand. Instead, we're still following right-wing dictates that everybody knows are wrong because they can't balance the budget and they still have pensions that they're denying the agent who have worked hard for them here. As long as a corrupt government leads the people, the people will fall away from the government. Thus, you have to have more armies, more nefarious ways of destroying people, and a planetary regime will destroy the planet or destroy those forces even quicker. They're bringing on the destruction of the last vestige of republicanism. And I don't mean republicanism by a party, I mean of a right to rule of the people, the true republican, the true democrat, free people, free choices. If that is not honored, and Bosnia, and the fact that they're about to send troops over there shows it's not going to be honored, because there's 150,000 foreign troops now in the United States, never before has an invading army not had to invade, to have that much manpower here, not even again uh, from the time of war of England. And with the Olympics, you're going to see a lot of changes here. They're all going to be bad because the evil must always be shown for what it is before people will actually turn for righteousness. So I think that that was a turning point in the history when two million or more black men came together in peace. Not 400,000, even they had to lie about that. Some people just can't tell truth anymore. So as a consequence, if you lie to yourself, you can lie to anybody. And if you lie to yourself, your soul is threatened and they set up their own destruction. I think it was a turning point that all of us should really remember because it happened in our lifetimes. Okay. Thank you. Yes, Dr. Blair, I'd like to welcome you to Portland. And uh, I, I, I thought maybe I'd get a chance to uh, ask you this question one-on-one, -on -one, but it doesn't really matter to me. Uh, I'm glad that there's someone who obviously way far out in front as a front runner, way out there. When I was in prison in 1984, uh, I, under the, I was under the influence of some marijuana, for one thing, and uh, I, I'm a praying person. And because I was under the influence, I didn't want to pray. But I had been looking at this picture that somebody had sent me of a pyramid. And, uh, and things started to make, started making a lot of sense to me. And, I thought it was probably a period of time, maybe two hours, but later on I found out it was just a matter of minutes. And all this information that started making connections started leading to that same one thing that was God. And because I was so grateful for this information, I felt like I was going to want to pray, but I said, no, nah, I'll wait, because I was under the influence. But I was like a voice telling me to say, no, nah, you need to pray. I wouldn't do it for about five minutes, and then finally I was like forced to pray. I went down so fast on this cement floor that I ruptured blood vessels in my eye and I couldn't see out of my left eye for a whole year. And um, I'm saying this because one of the things that I seen was like the, the eye on that pyramid, I was able to look through the pyramid and I'm, I'm real close to that pyramid, never been on a pilgrimage and in some ways I feel like I don't need to because for at least three or four days I couldn't think of nothing that I didn't have the answer for. So. Uh, and then after I got out of prison, I was scared I would maybe even get killed in there. I said, well, I didn't woke up and I'm in the lion's den. So uh, after I got out and I kept all this information to myself. But at any rate, um, I was thinking that there's something special about this northwest corner. I studied not, not to be no mason. I'm a Muslim. But I looked into masonry and I found out one of the things that they joke about is having all this information in front of people's faces. And they don't know nothing about it. They consider that 85% of the people are unworthy of this type of information. But they talk about the northwest corner a lot in masonry and Hiram being raised. And I always looked at this country as being like Solomon's Temple and Oregon and Washington or wherever being the northwest corner. So I felt like you coming here, you may have gotten some kind of, you know, I felt like this area was special. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like some of the people that I know and some of the things that we talk about make this area special. So the question was not necessarily a question, but I just wanted to know how you felt about that, how you feel about, you know, certain areas 
having more meaning or less meaning or some kind of significance to this particular Oregon and Washington area. This area is very special. Um, the United States at this time is very special. The fault lines that run here, and I have a booklet of prophecies. I, uh, I think it might have either have been left on the airlines or my uh, members of my group took it down to L.A. That's where I'll be going tomorrow. So I don't have it here. It's only 350 if you're interested in, you can write to us. We can mail it to you. And it lists also the 20 most earthquake-prone cities in the United States and why. Here, if I'm not mistaken, is the Rampato Fault. Uh, the area again that, um, and I really, well, I don't like to speak things that I don't know. Uh, I really need reference to that because it was well researched and there are a number of fault lines outside of just the one that we hear about in California that run here in Vancouver and the, on the islands and the oceans, of course, the lakes that are there. This area is also special because it is part of the California, Oregon Strip and metaphysics teaches that Everything west of the Rocky Mountains is not supposed to be here or was not here at one time. The land that was extant at that time was Christed into by the vestiges of Lemuria or Mu or Pan as it was called. One of the so-called lost continents. And this is why everything west of the Rockies where you are and in California grows larger, is different, has more oxygenating capacity. It's a whole different vibration that was here. Here was also part of the last so-called ice age, which I call a magnetic calamity, where part of what we now call Canada, which at one time was very fertile, and so, and the, the last outpost, shall we say, islands of a very fertile continent, was also full of a very strong vibration, and all of these vibrations got superimposed, it meshed together, forming what is called the Rocky Mountain Range. The vibrations here, were like a higher sequence. There was a choice here where people could diversify. They could take a high road or a low road. And they could do so with ease. There was a time here again where the very trees, and of course the, there's always given something to let you know the organ vortex was your means here, just like the Nile when the, alien, when the extraterrestrials reversed the Nile. That was their sign there, that these were holy lands. These were lands where magnetic anomalies could happen and you could raise frequency or lower frequency. You have choices when you come to places like this. There are 16 places like this on the earth. I think that here, the way you are going to go was tested by Russia in 70, either 86, 87 or 78, 79 with this project by which they used the staccato woodpecker ELF waves from Riga in Siberia and bombarded people here in Eugenia, Oregon. If you go back and check out the history about 10 years ago, you find that the crime rate went up there. They used this as a test module during the so-called Cold War, which really never was, just a time when supposedly there was a different enemy, communism this time, to test people out here in Oregon to find out how they would react to the woodpecker effect, what they call the ELF subliminal waves. This is a very unique city. This is a very unique state. Right there at Crater Lake, if you listen to the legends of Crater Lake, it says that one of the biggest meteors or spaceships ever was landed there. Of course, many people think the Native Americans are all foolish, so they don't respect so-called Indian legends, because they're not Indians. That's why I refer to them as Native Americans. They had their own tribes. Columbus, of course, was an interesting person. Here at Crater Lake, at Klamath Falls, at Klamath Lake, you have the algae that can hold more oxygen, which can help your soul and your spirit to raise in vibration because it can raise the blood. And still, you have two brothers that are fighting about it. Victor Coleman and Daryl Coleman, who one took the high road and refused to subliminate and to genetically find a cause for AIDS. And Daryl Coleman, who's out, who has very little intellectual sense as far as his brother, who's a genius, even they fight right there on the left. Here you have good and bad. And what I'm simply saying is, you can take the high road or you can take the low road. You and your thoughts can either make an earthquake happen here, they can cause such destruction, all of you will be in tears. Or within the next two years, you can so change it and act as a model to avert all of that. This is why you're going to find more metaphysical things happening here. The tremors will come back again. Mount St. Helen won't go off just yet. 
you get warnings, because good people always get warnings. But how you think, how your races live, how your politics live, how your religious faction lives, and truth will decide what you're going to do with Portland, Oregon, and all of Oregon itself. Of course, it's just the tip, shall we say, of the coming cataclysm. Okay. I have a twofold question. Uh, by the way, thank you very much for coming here, uh, Dr. Blair. Uh, I think the information that you have to impart here is uh, critical in our development as uh, melanated people, people of color, black people, whatever term you, that uh, is comfortable. Um, the first question is uh, for someone who couldn't be here, and that is, uh, um, what is the history of uh, the white race? Um, I personally have uh, heard two stories, uh, one under the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and the other one is Dogon allegory, the story of uh, Lulu and Mello. So I'd like to get your insight on that. Uh, the second question is dovetailing off of the last uh, questioner, and that is uh, when might, might we expect uh, some of these natural disasters to occur? And the B part of that question is, should we flee for more stable ground to the east, or should we just remain and wait to see what happens? Okay. First of all, I thank you for the compliment. I don't know if you're going to appreciate my answer. But I do thank you for having stated at the onset that you were glad that I came. I will not get into the origin of race because we're two racists in this country. I have given you the origin in metaphors here today. Definitely there is a difference between the races. And there are four basic ones, not five, but four basic races again. The planet will tell you where everybody came from simply because those that cannot adapt to the new melanin that is latent in all genetic structures, white, yellow also have melanin, will simply cease to exist. They will get sick and they will die. Melanated people, because melanin uh, is very sensitive to drugs and low frequencies, who continue to use the drugs and continue to think negative thoughts, will also die. Melanin is like a channeler, a precursor. Those that have melanin latent in their genes from the Moors, the Moorish invasion of Europe, per se, who have melanin because of things that were done some time ago, will find that melanin beginning to take to the fore. They'll be able to tan and not freckle. They'll begin to think under very oppressive radiation waves and they'll begin to find that there is a soul there that they can call on. Those who had the soul and misused that energy, who were the genetic scientists, shall we say, of the two, three thousand years ago, will find that it does not pay to overstep the bounds also because what comes around is always worse than what is initiated. I simply will speak this way. The land that all races share upon, which could have been the melting pot, which is the United States, will suffer the worst because it is the one that more was hoped for. And whether or not it suffers here and how soon, again, I repeat, will depend on the vibrations of the people. You cannot lie to the air. You cannot lie to a creator. You can lie to men and deceive all you want, but the vibrations are around you in your electromagnetic field. The vibrations are over a city. The vibrations are over a state. The vibrations are over a country and a nation. And the whole planet can view what is happening from space. The pressures, when you hold things in, when you act nasty, will build up in the earth itself because you're part of the earth. And once you tune to those vibrations, what you do will immediately go to the ninth power. So I simply say, how soon? Depends on the vibrations of the people. There are whole groups of so-called psychics and so-called metaphysical groups that are constantly meditating and praying to dissipate that buildup of energy through the tunnel systems, to dissipate the energy from the inner sun. We didn't even talk about that, the soul of Earth, and have it to make frequency with Procyon and with our own sun in peacefulness without building up pressure. There are whole people that are trying to rise above racism and religiosity into this true spiritual vortex that is from the Creator. And I simply say that you choose for yourself. If it continues as it's going now, with the elections in 96, on a right-wing, very unfeeling, negative, mind-controlled Congress 
continues to do what it's going to do, it'll happen in 96, it'll be devastated by 98. But we have until, as was pointed out, either 2005, 2012, 2002, anyway, in a very short time, a combination of celestial bodies where pressure will be put upon the Earth to stand alone or come into the Federation. And I simply say that choice you're making with each passing day, with each passing hour, every time you think, and you think beneath the dignity that you should hold as a soul creature. I can't tell you when that will happen, but I say it could be very, very soon. I'd like to take a moment and uh, allow myself to for you to read my mind and my soul. And so I'll keep a moment of silence and and allow that to happen. Will you audibly speak? I did not hear you. Can you repeat what you said? I said, would you... Continue. Audibly speak. Yes. Well, um, I come from the region of Transylvania, and uh, I've been here about 13 years. And there's certain experiences that I want, I went through that I do not want to talk about in this place. But I've heard a lot of things that you are mentioning about alien beings and uh, forces and names and uh, history and civilization and so forth. And I think a lot of it, it's, it's over my head because I do not have the, the same information you have and those names don't really mean much to me. Uh, and maybe I can speak for a lot of other people who don't know those things. Um, and uh, I want to ask you, what do you think about changes that are not necessarily on that uh, scientific plane that are taking place, that are taking place within people's hearts uh, transformations that we now can recall back spiritual enlightenment uh, has become part of our everyday uh, language and what is your thought or view on people like uh, or embodied beings like Buddha or Christ or people who have reached a certain uh, uh, experience that can share that with us that we can no longer uh, be blind and um, I think that I would like you to leave something with us of that uh, meaningful and powerful uh, communication that we can take to our homes we can take to our community I respect your deference but I believe that you fully understand as far as meditation and prayer, I think all of us should be doing that constantly. But it says also to act as well as pray. It says also to meditate and to effect change on a daily basis. I speak in workshops and say everybody should go into meditation at least a half an hour each day spent with themselves away from TV and loved ones and hated ones and everything else just to begin to find out who they are because it all starts with self. As you well know, there are shapeshifters, there are those who have made pacts and agreements with alien beings and they exist already under the very grounds on which we speak and in other areas, in the Transvaal, in Pennsylvania, Transylvania, in the Carpathian Mountains, Caucasoid Range, out of Nevada, Utah, they've always been here, and as long as this planet was created for a specific purpose it was, they always will. But you don't have to follow them. 
you will come under the rule of the Almighty Creator in one form or another, and each individual must find his own truth, regardless of mama, daddy, societies, nefarious as they are. What we have here now is a time for each person with the soul vibrations, whether they learned it on this planet or came here with it, to go back to the source of truth, for you can't get away with it. There will be a change. Nobody can sit on the fence. One way or the other, one side will rule. I serve the powers of the light. I will stay that way. Anybody who wishes to meditate and bring out their best side, that is their choice. There's still time for choices. There's power and negativity and immediate rewards and also immediate justice for some which they're going to beg for mercy. For the worst condemnation that a creator could give would be to put all of those who feel that power and follow the serpent together with nobody else for them to counteract with except themselves. That is justice. That's hope that those who follow that receive mercy. Yes. Dr. Barry, welcome to Portland. I would like to ask you a question about an experience that I have been having since the mid-60s and have been very reluctant to share with anyone to hear, you know, negative thoughts. But what does the change that's going on now, what part does that have to play in, in a person's uh, experiencing what is known as, as astral projection or, or uh, out of body experience? That's my question. Most of us, uh, or a lot of us, I feel, feel that we understand fully astral projections. I'm not sure we all do. But the astral or star plane is simply the sun plane. It's the soul plane. It's the ability to find out who we really are and be able to make contact with those energy forces in the universe, in the cosmos, in the solar system that are not bound to just planetary existence. It is our divine birthright. As many are teaching now, uh, the raising of the Merkava, the Ka and the Ba, the soul and the spirit, to the Mer of fluid emanations, the mind of the Creator, and flowing wherever the Creator creates on whatever vibration is necessary, reforming a physical body if you want or whichever, has always been that that is given to the privileged few who know that the Creator's existence creates all things. For those who get locked into the physical, and one way of getting locked in there is to go to the extremes that I just nodded, where you actually begin to try and destroy that that you cannot create, which means a direct thwarting of the Creator himself or herself, then of course they get locked into the body and they suffer physically because physical is all that they know. And they drive the stakes into the ground and chain them to that very planet. They have no sun existences, they have no dark hole existences. They simply are then physical. So I think the term astral projection is just one of the many overused firms, cliched badinage, to the point that it, it simply means that we are not the body, those who have souls. And the light can shine through, even if it's astral, at night through the binary, the pineal pituitary binary. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome to Portland, Dr. Blair. Morning. I'm concerned about the, uh, the little grays and the reptilians. Uh, as far as being the fallen angels, can you elaborate a little bit on that on the metaphysic level, please? Well, in the term limited as I am, of the fallen angels speaks not just to a person but to a group of angels of the ark, the arcs of energy that surround a universe and individual solar systems and that they chose to disconnect from the light and chose to become as Lucifer the shining one to create their own energy, their own light force and to have people worship and again for power so once that fall took place, then others could fall and laggards could be sent here from other systems where they had proven that they were not good enough to go on for a final showdown and chance. And that once these laggards were accepted here, and once the temples of the white light uh, 
couldn't do anything with them as they turned even against the gods themselves, as they were called, that we've had a problem here. And therefore, all the very negative forces could then concentrate on 21 such planets like this to bring about whatever had to happen. But these serve as, shall we say, guideposts as to what will happen in the future, which we're creating at the present. For our past has been someone's future, someone's future is our past. All things interchange. Here, the privilege of seeing what fell can rise may be what we can bring about. If not, then as those who fell from grace, from the higher vibrations, from the 7th and 6th and 5th dimensions, they'll manifest here and find out what it's like to go backwards and become just third dimensional all over again for what would seem to them forever. That would be the worst curse that could ever be put upon people who fell away from truth. For those who then have found that it wasn't worth it, and for those who came to try and teach and help, they'll get their rewards too. For they will be the new gods, not the creator, but the new gods of the universe. That's my truth. Good evening and welcome to Portland. My name is Barbara. I don't know if you're familiar with the um, meteor shower that's been happening over the city of Mexico for probably a 90-day period. I caught like a 10-minute um, excerpt on a cable network and they said that the national networks would not cover it. Number one question about that, if you do know about it, uh, what do you think the significance is of that? Uh, number two, uh, does it have anything at all to do with the Olmec Society which dwelled in the southern tip of Mexico? And number three, might that have anything at all to do with um, what the natives believe would have happened anyway? For instance, those um, so-called statuettes or statues on Easter Island that were supposed to have been mobilized at one time in robots. Once a year, the natives down there dress up in these uh, costumes that look like our space uniforms, and they say that people are coming back, their gods are coming back. Is this all related? Does it have any significance at all? And why has it been underplayed by the press? I'm glad you didn't have many questions. <laughs> this is the first female question, so I'm making up for all those that did stand up. <laughs> the latter part I'm not even going to speak to, but I'm glad that a female asked a question. I think, you know, like my psychology professor used to answer me in school, yes, yes, no, no, right, right, and bye. <laughs> and it would frustrate me no end until I begin to also be able to play that kind of a mind game. I don't like to play games anymore. I think simply that the Easter Island monoliths were the tip of the felled moo or pond where they were still constructing these things to ship them across to their satellites uh, and divisions throughout the earth. That the Meteor shower, I've heard something about, not in detail, but there have been many meteor showers which are nothing but incoming spaceships, if you would, and laboratory ships, much as was shown in um, Close Encounter of the Third Kind. They send these things to test and to sample and to let them know what's happening. We're sending them or someone else is sending them? We're not sending them. Oh, okay. The United States, if you mean we, has a whole fleet of magnetic electro, let me stop that, electromagnetic saucers, if you would. They have beam weaponry, even at the time where they recruit money for it, they already have it. Uh, they have cloned the little greys. They have, they really have advanced technology. <laughs> the only really thing, they weren't able to build Avro cars or alien vehicle, uh, what they call it, ordinances, that could shoot at the same time through this electromagnetic field because they only have an electrical field. So they taught them just enough to get them in trouble, but they could still shoot them out of the skies and they couldn't shoot the aliens out of the skies. The um, energies here are, again, as I think I tried to say before, maybe not too well, I'll try again, that all of these things will take place. Alien or extraterrestrial vehicles, changes in vibrational rates and storms and things along this line, hiding by Reuters and ANP and UPI and some things that are said but people won't will read it but we won't believe it. These are happening not only because the Olmec saw it happen, because the Dogon saw it happen, because the Tuareg saw it happen, because the Siluk saw it happen, because the Maui Islanders saw it happen, but because lot still in these people are souls that wish to reconnect. They continue to bring in the light. 
others are growing toward the light that they're bringing in and it will be made so clear as to what's bad and negative and what's good and positive or positive and negative should be variances that everybody will be able to choose these are only signs for what we would call second coming the revision the revitalization wormwood whatever you want it just shows that a time of change is very near and these are the signs that kind of precourse that change thank you You're welcome Welcome to Portland, sir. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I need to know, uh, I was traveling, uh, coming from Pakistan, and I experienced something that was remarkable. Um, what happened was, there was a high-pitched sound that really bent me over, but as I looked around, nobody else was affected. Uh, I've had other experiences where I hear high pitched sounds, but, you know, nothing that devastating. I was wondering if you might be able to elaborate on it, if you had any knowledge of it, or... There are many sounds that are going about. Some are called the Dao's hum. Uh, there is what is called the International Geological Hemispheric Program. It's through the Bering Straits, so some is referred to as the Bering Straits Project. It is a project using what they call moles, M-O-L-E, and not the underground CIA implanted moles, the people who are, again, sublimated and carrying out bad dictums, but more to what is called the molecular organizing laser equipment, which are bearing digging holes. They started off going maybe about six foot every day, and now they're able to make such rapid progress that it's even frightening to them. A lot of people were destroyed, their minds ripped asunder, and their souls even shattered using that kind of electromagnetic device, but nevertheless, they're using it. And it is a part of digging out the holes underground, connecting with many of the underground cities, uh, from Pasho to Gartha, of course, they, they don't go into Gartha, but they will use the, what they call cavern worlds. And they're trying to re-enlarge these places to hide people from the surface when the so-called cleansing takes place. They are utilizing the existing tunnels from Agartha to Shambhala to Pusai to, uh, there's a couple of, I can't even remember the names now, but they're just many, many cities and tunnels. The, the earth is honeycombed with them. So underneath these western areas, these vibrations of these tunnel borings are of course driving people nuts per se because they're using uh, frequencies that are very bad for the between the heart decibels and the brain frequencies, and many people are disturbed by them. So as they continue this project to enlarge, to renovate, if you would, and to bore in from the cities that now exist, since they are not allowed to sometimes use the existing chasms into these big tunnel ways by which they can circumvent the earth and hopefully hide there as they have before and as they think they can do again, it won't work because the soul of earth this time will put out vibrations that will collapse those tunnels and will send such resonances through them that they'll go mad there too. But as any other person who won't conform and thinks that they are the creator, they will have to suffer their own ignorance. Good evening, Dr. Blair, and welcome again to Portland, Oregon. I have a quest two-part question that I would like to get answered about the sun. And the question is, the sun that we look at is it really the sun or is it a reflection of a bigger sun in the universe? And also, is there a sun up under the ground? And if it is, will you please elaborate on it? The sun, as I understand it, is only a reflection of other chakra centers in the minds of the various gods leading to the creator. The chakra systems in this planetary universal individual must align. And so the centers are the suns which emit frequencies to keep physical, etheric, astral, and mental, well not mental, but astral, separate and balanced at the same time, are what the sun systems are. There are said to be people that live on the sun. There can be sun existences. Then there are whole worlds and universes without suns, where the people create their own light, create their own energy centers, and create again their own suns. Those are the suns of the sun. At the same time, this planet and all planets are hollow, have 
a central sun, which is the soul of that planet. Any planet created without that, such as our moon, even though it's hollow too, is an artificial satellite set in by the provinces of the what they call serpent people, or the ones that uh, are not of the faith, to set up an electrical field to imbalance all planets and to control the people and sublimate them. The soul of Earth, which is very vibrant, has received this new energy and is expanding. It's setting up a corridor, a vortex, of the many vortexia that are around planets to allow those of the light to return. Before, it was just like reaching into a cesspool and they couldn't take the vibrations or they wouldn't incarnate to go through that kind of thing just to help out when the people in turn were not ready to be helped. Now that there's so many incarnates that are ready to be helped, that corridor is once more open. It was open between 43 and 83 with the Philadelphia experiment. It's been kept open through negative means, but now it will be used also as a passage as the various corridors and things that are on Earth revibrate to open up many corridors now where advanced people and higher minds and higher souls can now re-enter and those that are here can reawaken. It's a time of change. So yes, I believe in the inner sun and outer sun and the corridor of the suns, as they call it, the vortex path. Good evening, Dr. Blair. My name is Stella, and I have, I think, three questions. First of all, I'd like to know about the reptilians. About which? The reptilians. Um, I'd like to know, from a scale to one, from one to ten, how far did they fall or how evolved were they? How evolved were the reptilians? Yes. And, you know, how low were their fall? Um, how were they, how did they come about? Is that the question, or is there more? Pardon me? Is that, is that it, or is that's, there more? That's one. Okay. That's just one? Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay, I hope it's not going to be 20 questions here. Uh, no. Let's go with the first one again, because I can see this may be lengthy. Okay. Uh, to my understanding, the Dracons, as they're called, and Draco, Draconian, as they would call it again, uh, existed as a 13th planet right on the perimeter. We are actually supposed to be in the, uh, in the Canis Major, Canis Minor, Sirius system. Since Orion is very close in the southern hemisphere, they had a lot of negativity to what was called the Unholy Six and the Orion, the Pleiadians. Uh, if you read Barbara Masiniak's books, he has a very good explanation, except that she has bought them, except when she came back with Earthly Living Library, which she finally says they're admitting that they have control now, that they are losing, because they've now got to go back into their past to correct our future. So they, saw, they found, like everybody else, you can only get away with it for as long as you, you know, for a limited time. But the energies that come in enable a whole group of people called dinoids and reptoids who because of the way they looked and the need for a more icy, a colder vibration, looked down upon the warm-blooded uh, laggards again and the cross breezes they call them here. They also could serve the universal prime creator. They also could serve first cause. But because they were so advanced and put here first, instead of realizing they now could fall further, they felt again that they should now have direct control and that humanoids should worship them. Uh, they found out that there was a power greater than them, and so instead of fighting that power, they returned, now discouraged to go back to the old climbs. But this time, that's going to change, too, now. So, yes, they're here. Yes, they do exist. Yes, they did have a whole lot of say-so on Earth. They no longer will have. They will try, though, and they're on their way back. Okay. Yeah, that's number one. Number two is that um, I see spirits quite often. Um, some of them are dark shadows. Some of them I can make out. For instance, there's a lady in blue that walks up and down the hall all the time. Uh, there are two, uh, three, three of the four people that have come in and have seen uh, this, this lady. Uh, things have ended up being knocked off of the, um, pictures have been knocked off of my walls. And um, one particular one I saw peeking from behind the drapes was just a, a tall, dark figure. And when I went, when I stepped over toward it, 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 it just jumped back disappeared. I would like to know um, what do you think uh, these spirits are all about? Is it, is it, it's not too, too high of a spirit. I don't think the dark one is. You know, I'm asking your opinion, of course. But the lady in blue, um, she hangs out in the second bedroom. I mean, you can feel her, feel her energy when you walk into the room. 
You know, just like you're being electrocuted, but lightly, like little needles sticking in your body. That's number two. <laughs> now, how do you remove them? <laughs> how do you remove them? We will stop with three. How do you remove them? and respect to you, after three, that will be the end of it. What you need is a personal consultation, which I will give you tomorrow, given the time. Okay. If you read uh, the book by... Um, I can't think of the lady's name. She writes about the crops, Morden Howell. Uh, she has a very excellent breakdown of different types of aliens, or at least what people are considering aliens, including the blue lady with the blue electromagnetic field, uh, the yellow creatures, and the, again, all of the... We're at a time now where we're finding, like, as I say again, we're in what we call a frequency, and it's not a vacuum. These frequencies, as long as they don't cross, can all exist separate but equal. Anomalies come when these lines of force, these crests and troughs, cross. And now they have warping machinery that can cause the dimensionalists to frequency downward into our dimension. They enter into rooms. They use technology to do what used to be Merkabas and spiritual awakening used to be able to do. They can do this now because, as they say, they're in between a time of flux, in between the next dimension, the next frequency, and this one. Pretty soon those operators will find that they'll get stuck in between time and in between frequencies. And that's hell. But yet they still play games by going to lower dimensions to laud what they haven't when other dimensions above them also watch. The watchers also seek, the seekers also watch. People play games in consciousness. They can do so on this planet, as I say, because there's 21 special ones. But soon that's going to change. What is happening with you may be because of the building, because of who you are and don't know who you are, because of whatever little abyss or vortex has been opened in that building or in your consciousness. Uh, I would no more even begin to try and tell you how to adjust that before an audience than I would personally if you are not right. If you are right, you already have been told what you shouldn't have done or what you should do to help that situation. Stop listening so much to others who don't understand and cleanse the self that you know you do understand. Okay? Mm -hmm. Grandmother and auntie are not always right. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Dr. Blair, it's good to see you. Good for you being here. Question. And it's dealing with this Pacific Northwest corner. I'm a 50-year-old black male from Mississippi. It's my home. And no place has I ever seen. And, and maybe you can tell me, that, or maybe you can give some generality of what's happening as far as the signs. But this love affair of... Of, of the white man and the, and, and, and the black woman and the black woman and the white man and this mixture is this a good thing that's happening or I only see it here in this Pacific Northwest more than any other place I don't understand it and it boggles we've been wrestling with this thing groups of us get together and we try to just understand this what's happening that this it seems like a love affair that this white, the black man has for this white woman. Or you got to have, but yet the relations, as far as the black man and the white man, is, look like it's doing, is, is separating. But this mixing and this intermixing is just boggling to my mind, brother. And, I, and, and maybe if you can give some clarity or some insight to what is really happening here. And I'm saying the Pacific Northwest up here because I don't see it other places as prevalent as I do here. And, I, and, and if I'm sounding crazy, just tell me to shut up. But it seems like that's what's happening. And I've talked to other people, and it seems like they're saying the same thing also that up here that it's more prevalent. And maybe you give some insight on that for us. Well, first of all, you listen to me for three hours, so we won't even talk about what's crazy and neurotic or what's psychotic and not. <laughs> Secondly, species now and the kind of souls that want to enter into those species bodies are back here for certain reasons. There are no weak souls being born now. Some of the souls coming into existence now uh, will right walk over you. The kids, 
these children as we call them are old souls warrior souls back here for specific reasons all of them strong all of them knowing what they want and unless you put them in their place quickly and the government is trying to stop you from doing that because they don't want you to under recognize those souls that are coming in they will open the gate floodgates for every negative thing or they'll come and fight every negative thing tooth and nail because they're the last ones to come back they are the strong ones they are the strongest now and I could go on that one about drugs and why they allow them to have and what this does to melanin and all like this let me go directly to your question without equivocation we enter into either male or female bodies our hormone supply may make us homosexual we still have preferences whatever body we find ourselves in simply because we are the strong old souls there are relationships that have been set up that what we now call racially have nothing to do with race there are old and young people that will come together because there's true love and a true graduation of that soul competent together there are white people that will see black people with hate and there are black people that will see white people with hate and a white people will see black people with love and black people will see white people with love because they're going to look into their souls you must understand that whatever you love or hate you draw to you in the next incarnation if you don't believe in reincarnation that's not my fault let me also say that what must be justified and done or undone will be done in this lifetime or the next and that's all we're going to get everything else will be settled on a spiritual soul plane and there'll be wars in the heavens as there were before if we can understand not to judge but to live your own life fully then you understand finding love in any form in any race is a very harsh undertaking taking on this planet and you're blessed if you can find it if these people are so moved even take the racism that exists in this country and still try to get together God bless them let me say that their own souls will suffer and their physical bodies will suffer simply because they have come to a racist planet in one of the most racist countries on the face of the earth this state is only a microcosm I see it in Chicago I've been in New Jersey I've been in New York I've been to Philadelphia I've been to Texas it's happening all over it's not just here you think it's here it's not just here the female wants to give birth on this planet and it's through that channel and through that womb that the new people come in the white woman is drawn to the black man because of the vibrations of melanin and the fear that what she's giving birth to would not be able to survive in the new age at the same time it can survive and will survive but not as an earth surface person to stay on the surface you must have melanin men have always fought over women when women have been short and the sexual exchanges have been cut back as a man for every woman and a woman for every man we're told that women outnumber the men on this planet that is not true but the men do liquidate themselves in wars much faster than men do women do what the vibrations now are saying take whatever body you want for your soul vibration to finally find truth in this dispensation and when you can understand that the teachings were and I know many people will not like what I'm going to say but many people have not liked a lot of things that I've said the soul will enter into a body near an end age that can invest learn from and get things straight with I can't put it any more simplistic and souls can change bodies and whatever you hate or love you must enter into in order to learn why you hated or loved it that's why it's good to stay in the middle pillar the middle path not get too much in love or too much in sex or too much in anything but find your path of righteousness and a path of spirituality there are black people who hated white people that are now incarnated as white people on this planet mark my words I'm talking about planet Sean not Terra Earth there are white people who hated black people that are now incarnated as black people and that's why when these souls now will not stand for injustice it's because they have had lifetimes of living outside of that fear and that kind of degradation it's a time of truth souls have no colors people okay. do if you can't learn when you're in the body you have to experience it again and new birth will come in and woman still wants to preserve the best channel for her soul offspring as best I can take it good thank you
away too after the last response to the brother in the white sweater. Please don't everybody run away. I have a few other things I'd like to share with you and don't have to worry. I won't be over here tomorrow to bore you. I'll be taken off again. Thank you. Yes. Okay, I just wanted to contribute a couple things that may have something to do with what you were talking about tonight. And one is that um, an alignment of planets has already occurred about two weeks ago in Sagittarius, seven planets. And in ancient days, all they knew about was seven planets, not the ones we know about today also. I think that has, that's very important and has caused a lot of changes. And the second is that if you can expand your metaphor um, of the lizard people to include amphibians, uh, consider the following, um, a person named Newt. Yeah, I just thought I'd throw that in. Okay. Yeah. Yep, Newt Gingrich. Yeah, you're right. You said it. I didn't. Uh, yeah, it's my belief that we have a 12-planet system. They've already, on Apollo 15 and Apollo 14 and Apollo 13, discovered that the 10th um, the one, and in, in the house, papers circulated amongst the august, the, the British Astronomer Royal and all this kind of stuff. They're talking about it. They even have photographs of it. But, of course, they're still not. Uh, I state that the systems are always in 12, and it's the 13th that sets as the anomaly. We're about to get that 13th back again, and that's why there will be an instability, and any unstable atom must, of course, uh, change. So even though they're bad, they're serving a good purpose, too, because it's a time for the change. Uh, I guess the other one I already kind of spoke to. Uh, a newt is a newt by any other name. It's still a newt. <laughs> Not a newt her, though, huh? Yes. Good evening, Dr. Blair. Um, I've learned that uh, dimensional change um, goes from the um, uh, 90 degrees at the right angle and uh, to a perpendicular line to go from the second to the third dimension. Uh, you've been speaking of dimensional changes through frequencies and vibrations. Uh, how do you um, really explain that? How do, how do the two, the frequencies and vibrations and a, and a right angle uh, meet for dimensional change? Right angles to the Socrates triangle and again sacred geometry and so on and so again. Let's just say without trying to get into super physics, which I don't even think I'm capable of doing, that time is, dimensions are, frequency is also. If we think of there being a first cause, I can't begin without a beginning, so I have to just accept a premise, my basic premise being first cause, which I refer to as universal prime creator, because all the other names I heard, I don't know if they're true or not, so why give it a name? But there is a first cause for my truth. With that premise as a basis, let us build from it. From that consciousness of totality expanding in all directions, it must form a circle somewhere along the line. And all vibrations and rays catch up with each other. That parameter then will be what is called the known, have developed from the unknown or first cause. Then when you linearize that, making your box, your T-square, your triangle, your circle, you're seeing all the paradigms it may expose from that beginning and thus has developed sacred geometry. You find again in sacred geometry they still use the flower and cross circles which creates a new dimension. Linear persuasion only falls in with the tree of life. In Dranvelo Matilzadek's book, everything in this book is true, but everything in this book is really good, but how's, what's the name of that one again? Um, anybody read that book? Everything in this book is true, but it's exactly the way things are, something like this. But anyway, in sacred geometry, they show you the million petal locus, a thousand one petal locus again, if you would, with the million different differentialities, and after that, we've already changed octaves. When you're using linear concept, then you're using flatlining or one dimension. When you use, again, as they teach in geometry and so, to get in the inner lines, and you can begin to connect them and shade them, and you begin to get depth and then width and then breadth and so on again like this. All I'm trying to say is, if we think of it in a more simple term for a person like me, that there is universal mind and then fluctuations within it. And as the mind fluctuates and then it gets on far enough on the tangent, ego becomes the anomaly, which then seeks to find out where it came from, 
and before it goes back, we want to see the effect change. And then the ego stems from that, and pretty soon you have differentiation on that one line. I simply think that we're in somebody's mind, that the frequencies of that mind are infinite, and as we change our frequencies, we experience just for an infinite time that reality which we call life. That when we get tired of that game and play, we can't cease to exist because we didn't think ourselves into being. We were part of, again, the equation of night and day, rest and breathing and in and yang and so on again like that, the aerodynamic, again, corollaries that go with that. I simply say that sacred geometry is true. The sacredness of the mind is true. The trips of the soul and divisions of the soul are true. And the being able to call it all back together is also true. So I think it's just a time when we went out on the exhale, and now it's time for Brahma to call it back in again. Because Brahma can be me in different names. Thank you. Well, uh, I brought with me a number of products. Some of you are aware of the Meta Center in which I'm director in Chicago and have called for our tapes. We have a lot of video and audio tapes. Uh, we have a number of health products which we hope will help you to become better souls. And also we have a lot of oxygenating products which will help you to kill off a lot of the anaerobic viruses and bacteria even down to silverloid and aurum and gold, which will raise your blood rates and stop these things from having homage in your home, which is your temple, which is your body. We also have brain products to help you to concentrate memory, avert Alzheimer's, which is nothing but aluminum poisoning and radiation poisoning, and many other things that supposedly they can solve that they well know they can. We can cure the common cold. Okay, that's one of the easiest things to cure. The point is, again, if you can raise your vibration, get rid of the mucus from animal and dairy products, and again, put oxygen into the body so that the higher self can begin to live, your vibration of your blood will change and everything else about you will change, and that that is below you cannot exist within you. Also, you must make up your mind that that's the mind that you want to affect, and you can't be changed and, uh, you know, swayed by lower vibrations, people's words, and everything else. You have to stick with what you're going to do. But at least we can help you to raise the vibrations internally to maintain that, that hopefully your mind will have. Because of that, I said three minutes, um, I have products here that can do those things for you. And on the table are oxygen products called Genesis 1000. On the table, again, are brain products. We have it called Brain 3. On the table are what we consider one of the best multivitamin mineral tablets around. On the table is hydrogen peroxide for those cuts and infections and 35% food grade, not the 3% that you get in the stores. And on the table, of course, are ginkgo, which help again to raise your energy and hold the energy once you've raised it up with the Mary on and Duraplex and many of the other things there. We have a whole list back there of products with just a brief description by heading. We have products for stamina, we have products for sexual activity, we have products for mental activity, we have products for the immune system, products for stress, products to help uh, conserve the myelin sheath. We have products for just about everything. The only thing we say, we research them as best we can and they are the best in the line that we can get. We have superior products and we label them as such. We have excellent products and we have good products. Knowingly, we will not sell you bad products again. Again, if you wish to buy any of those things, it makes my plane trip less burdensome. I don't have to pay the $40 for the extra box. And if you don't, I'll sell them someplace else. I only hope that you did hear what I did have to say. But also for those of you on a very monetary basis or in the multi-level marketing, we have a way where you can sell some of the products and make money also again. Either way, the monetary system won't be lasting too much longer anyway. I'd say enjoy yourself while you can make life happier during this season for others as well as yourself and feel the vibrations of goodness not just at Christmas but all year through. The planet will enjoy it. I definitely enjoy it. And so will those you love who may even begin to love you. Thank you so much, Creator Bless.